are so bright Pull your hat down, make sure your cinch is tight Horse is kinda snuffy, cold chill up your spine It'll get your ass moving some more burn on daylight Welcome to Burning Daylight, the only podcast for the working cowboy. Well, howdy there, Daylight Burners. Happy Monday. Uh, hope you had a good Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, I, I, kind of ambivalent as to whether you ate in turkey or not i'd just as soon well i honestly i don't give a shit what you eat uh i i eat beef and uh, we had a turkey and it was all right deep fried um and, and we had uh we had a fried elk steak too which was pretty good deep fried uh it was an elk roast <laughs> and then we did uh just your 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 standard uh Try tip on on the grill, kind of kind of half smoked, half grilled, um, but it was good. <clears throat> and uh, I gotta say, as far as all that goes, not to toot my own horn too much, but the beef was the best part of it. So, um, yeah, if you had turkey, I hope it was it was edible. And um, yeah, anyway. Um, <clears throat> holiday the holiday season's fully upon us and um whew, it's uh it's, it's just been busy 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 and it's uh it's not slowing down for a little while and um uh it's just that time of year but also it's the time of the year NFR starts this week and for the the one time uh during the year 10 day stretch where your average working rancher a cowboy gets to play um well monday i guess it starts off as uh as friday morning quarterback cuz it starts on a thursday ends on a sunday a week a week and 3 days later or whatever <clears throat> but you get to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all the way, you know, all the days of the week, morning quarterback, except you're, uh, you're doing it from a place of true knowledge. And, uh, not, not that, uh, you know, there, there's plenty of, of former football players that play uh, Monday morning quarterback on years. And that that's all well and good when it's coming from a cowboy standpoint, most of these guys that are, that are playing Monday morning quarterback, um, can rope. They can ride a bronc. And also a lot of those guys should the rodeo competitor be put in their line of work, meaning going out to go punch cows out on the ranch every day. Most of the time, the ranch cowboy is going to outperform the rodeo cowboy in that environment. So we've got a little extra chip on our shoulder, and yeah, we could do that better. Maybe not do it better, but like you put them in our scenario, and they they, they wouldn't last a day in my shoes. Wouldn't last a day. Uh, but it's also it's a it's a cool time to uh, to highlight rodeo, and and it and it gets a, a lot of attention. Not as not as much attention as we'd all like, and I guess for that matter, probably more attention than some of us would like. Um, but it's a good it's a good time to highlight uh, the American cowboy, even though it's not very representative of what the, your average cowboy is. It's still a good time. And uh, I've never been to the NFR here. It's a great grand old time. I, I just assume not spend uh, any more time in Las Vegas than I absolutely have to. Uh, the few times I've been there have not treated me all that well. And, 
eh, I just don't care to go back. Um, but the NFR would be one reason for me to go back. I just haven't gone yet. Uh, last year, of course, it was, uh, it was in, was it Dallas or Arlington? Was it, was it at Jerry world or was it at Rangers stadium? I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> that was the first time since, um, uh, 86, I believe. Yes. 86. I just looked that up. Um, that it wasn't in Las Vegas and now it's back in Las Vegas this year. And honestly, I don't see it going anywhere. Um, Nevada is a pretty, pretty strict COVID state as far as the state regulations go. Not that many people pay much attention to them out here in these rural parts, but I think uh, COVID be damned. They they weren't going to miss out on NFR again this year. That's a lot of money. A lot of people uh, kind of make the NFR their gathering point for the year to see old friends and family and whatnot. But um, anyway, it's back in Vegas starting this Thursday. We're going to do some live watch longs at least one night. We'll see how it goes that first night. We might do some more. We'll see. Um, but that'll be streaming live all on uh, on Facebook and YouTube and we're all wherever else you get all the shit. Uh, we'll try to have something there, but won't be able to show the the broadcast itself. But you can watch along with us, and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll try to do some cool stuff. But I wanted to talk about the history of rodeo. Um, it's kind of considered the most American sport. And in a way it is, um, I don't know if you could say it truly originated in America, but then again, uh, what did that we considered like truly American as far as sports that originated truly in America, there's, uh, or in the Americas, there's like, uh, baseball, uh, not even really baseball because because that kind of was a a derivative of cricket, which is an English sport. Uh, Hockey and lacrosse, I think, were probably probably truly American sports. Uh, Basketball, I guess, is a a truly American sport. That was actually uh, originated back in, was it that? Yeah, it was the Aztecs down in Mexico. Uh, but rodeo originated really back in like the the 1700s and and 1800s and if we're going to be real technical it is a either a spanish i guess at that time would be a mexican uh sport when did when did spain break off from from mexico probably right after the us split off from England, so call it the late late 1700s, early 1800s. So, however you you classified, uh, what we we know as rodeo originated as uh, competitions between different ranches back in in old Mexico or Spain, uh, now present day Texas, California, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, the American West. So while it might not be a truly American sport, it is a truly American Western sport. The the Western Americas is kind of where it originated. Um, But the, the, the early competitions were mostly uh, horsemanship roping and bullfights. They had some bull riding events, uh, but being uh, it was, all derived of Spanish heritage for the most part. Uh, You had some bullfights and, and then the sport of bull riding originated around uh, what I think they, uh, the the Spanish called them the charter, the modern day charros, but like chariada, I think is how they, how they pronounced it uh, is what they were called. And then eventually it um, evolved into what the modern day sport of rodeo, uh, which is sh- 
comes from the Spanish word rodear or rodear. Uh, and it basically means to, to round up or to gather. And uh, out here in these, uh, in like the Great Basin region, what you, you called Holden rodear, you'd gather and you hold all your cattle in a bunch and you sort and brand from there, but that's called Holden rodear. And which, but all, all, uh, originates from Rodear means to gather. I guess my, my wife will probably correct me on that. Cause she actually knows Spanish. Um, and then I can tell her to shut up cause I'm actually part Mexican. So that trumps in today's society, that trumps the, just the fact that I, I've got, I've got, I've got some I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit ethnic and that, that, that trumps. So there we go. My, my definition works. Hey, sorry folks. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I got some sponsors that help me, uh, keep this thing running smoothly or ish, you know, smooth ish. That's how I, that's how I run my operation. Uh, these guys help me run it smoother ish. First up, we got uh, Tracy Morrison Custom Silverwork out of Chelsea, Oklahoma. He's building all the cool cowboy accoutrements, buckles, bits, spurs, conchos. Uh, does a really, really nice job engraving. He built a, a set of spurs for a giveaway here. He's building me a set of spurs right now. And I just recently decided to go full time into this silver working business. So make sure you go give him uh, all your support. Check him out on Facebook and Instagram, Tracy Morrison. That's T R A C I E. Tracy Morrison Custom Silver Work. I'm not quite sure what his handle is, but search him. You'll find him. And, uh, or just uh, look anytime I post. Uh, an episode, uh, make sure you click on the, on the post and you'll be able to see who, who I tagged in and I'll tag all the sponsors. So, uh, Tracy Morrison, custom silver work. Next, next up, we got Scott, Jason Hall, Hall's Rocky mountain, uh, uh, jewelry. Uh, Scott is what can Scott not do? He is, he's a buckaroo cowboy. He's a silversmith. He's an engraver. And, uh, he, he's, a, he's an all around complete metal Smith that includes uh gold and silver smithing, blacksmithing repasse. If you don't know what the hell that is, that's uh, stone cutting and setting setting. Um, and he also does a uh, pen and ink, uh, artwork. So <sighs> check him out. This guy, uh, I don't, I don't know how he finds time to do all this stuff, but, uh, he, he's one of the, one of the better, uh, silversmith engravers that you'll, you'll find out there and just does really, really good work. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of mine. Uh, check him out. Scott Jason Hall on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Hall's custom or Hall's Rocky mountain jewelry. And, uh, him and his wife got, a uh, their own Instagram page at cow camp life. And, uh, Check him out. Make sure you let him know you heard about it on Burning Daylight. Uh, next up, we got a new sponsor to the show, uh, Brittany Hesseltine and Square Top Leather. Uh, she is building custom leather gear, uh, <coughs> shaps, uh, whether it be shotguns, bat wings, uh, chinks, armidas, uh, head stalls, reins, uh, Brass collars, all the, all the good leather work. I don't think she builds saddles yet, but all the other type of stuff, I bet you she can build it and she'll build it how you want it. Uh, built for the working cowboy price for the working cowboy. You can find her on, uh, on Facebook, uh, Brittany Hesseltine, Hesseltine. And, uh, I'm not sure if she's got a, a Facebook page or not. Let me check real quick. Square top leather, uh, really nice gal square top leather and design. Yep. She's got a, she's got a page there on Facebook. So check her out. Um, let her know you, you heard about on burning daylight. She's building me a really nice, uh, well, I don't know. They're real nice. I'm assuming they're real nice. Cause I've seen a lot of her work. Uh, but we're making a, we'll put together a really cool design, uh, on a set of shotguns. So I'm really excited to see what she put together. And, uh, Go check out her work, uh, square top leather and design. Uh, next up we've got, uh, greens reserve hemp 
uh, snuff, uh, 100% natural, uh, 100% hemp, uh, no THC in it. And it's, uh, if you're looking to quit chewing or you're just looking for an alternative, something, uh, this is really good stuff. It's, uh, the stuff I is the natural is what I, I chew and it's, uh, tastes kind of like, a a straight flavored tobacco. So skull straight, Copenhagen straight, something like that. They also have a menthol flavor. It's uh it's really good stuff. And, uh, if you're looking to quit chewing or you're just looking for something else, I, I, I do it. I put a, put this stuff in when I'm on, uh, when I'm recording podcasts, it helps me focus a little bit. <clears throat> and anyway, good stuff. Greens reserve. That's G R E E N E S, uh, reserve.com slash shop. Use the promo code, uh, Matt G R. You'll get a dollar off a uh, roll or five or dollar off a can, $5 off a roll. Uh, Matt G R at greens com forward slash shop. And, uh, if you don't like hearing all these ads, I understand. Um, head over to, uh, patreon.com slash burning daylight. You'll get bonus content. You'll get, uh, every podcast that, that I put out, you'll get a couple hours early. And sometimes you'll just get, uh, unseen content that, uh, that I don't put out to the public. And, uh, going to do a few more of those, uh, starting in this, uh, this next year, give, uh, the Patreon, subscribers a little extra and you also get uh access to a drawing that i do try to do once a month uh we do a giveaway uh different makers and whatnot uh we gave away a bit we gave away some uh, jeans we gave away a rope gave away a bunch of stuff so anyway uh, head over to patreon.com slash burning daylight you can uh you can find out all the details there now let's get back into the show um, so anyway, it started as, uh, different ranches, uh, pitting the, the best vaqueros against each other. <coughs> and then from there, um, really it was after the civil war and, and the big push westward in, in the U S that, that really spurred on the age of the cowboy. And that from, from, I guess civil war. So mid 1860s till about the mid 1870s, that was kind of the, the heyday of the American, like, especially like the free range, open range American cowboy, where it was just, uh, people moving West and, uh, ranches being started left and right. And you're trailing cows from, from here to there to just, uh, just help fuel the, the Western migration. And, uh, <coughs> I've said plenty of times on this, sh- on this show, like the cowboy has been a dying breed since it started because it, there's, you know, it really, really kind of came into its own right about the time of the, you know, in the heyday of the industrial revolution. So you had, one of the oldest ways of of doing something and and herding cows uh coming coming in contact full head on contact with uh just mechanization technology and as 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 called the in, the industrial revolution and at the time you know it was it was a dying dying way of life because, uh, you know, you had the, you had the locomotive, you had the trains, you had, uh, you had factories and here, here you are out on the plains and, uh, in the Western U S a guy on a horse with a rawhide rope and, uh, herding cows. And that, that was, that was a dying way of life. Well, here we are 150 years later and it's still a dying way of life. However, there's uh, one aspect of rodeo that kind of, or I guess one man in particular that, uh, that really kind of idealized uh, the American rodeo and that that's Buffalo Bill Cody with his Wild West show. Well, it wasn't so much a rodeo as we know it nowadays. 
it was a showcase of the American West, the American frontier. And so there was wild horse races. There was, you know, bucking Broncos, if you will. And, but there was also shooting contest. And then there was <clears throat> also the, the, the worst parts of, of American society. society and that's uh, like, Hey, here, here's these Indians that we just, uh, we just, uh, beat into submission, but Hey, come take a look at them. Here's sitting bull. And, uh, so there, there was that part of it, but it was just all, all parts of, of Western life, but it was kind of the, the pre precursor to, or I guess an evolution of where, where rodeo started. Uh, and it was just, it was a shift in the direction as, uh, towards the, the modern day rodeo. And, and those early competitions, like I said, there was, uh, it was a, there was a lot of roping and riding, but it was more, I would, I would say it was more geared toward what you would, con, we would call today as a, uh, as a ranch rodeo, uh, where it was more, more of a team aspect where, and it was more practical, um, everyday tasks. So a lot like what you'd see at a ranch rodeo today where Buffalo Bill capitalized on what he he already saw was was a dying way of life and, and instead of just trying to not only just save what what was there but to to make others feel or to sense the value of it and 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 in doing so he he created that that just almost never ending uh vision of of like the dying breed and that that that's the cowboys so the, i i guess maybe that's um maybe i i should re uh rephrase my statement that the the cowboy has been a dying breed since the wild west show <laughs> I, I guess is is kind of where i i see is uh as as the American West taken on that nostalgic view, and that that's kind of where it started was the Wild West show. <clears throat> but from there, uh, it got a little more, a um, little more fine tuned, and and uh, and and the, these play, these things were starting to pop up all over the place, and and particularly they they centered around uh, the Fourth of July. And, you know, it's uh, Independence Day, and that seemed to be when people would hold their gatherings. And 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 though the Fourth of July just it was it was kind of a natural gathering time, and, and there's there's a lot of old rodeos, but the the ones that really kind of stand out, um, the first one, I, I guess, the town that really kind of takes hold of the claim of the first like organized rodeo is deer trail, Colorado, just East of Denver. And that one was said to have taken place on eight in 1862. And then as far as the, the, the first annual rodeo, uh, or, or the, I, I guess another one that kind of holds that title is Prescott, Arizona, which said was, uh, started in, uh, 1888. And that might've been the first one that, that paid or for, for a cash pot, uh, Cheyenne frontier days was 1897. Pendleton roundup was 1910 and the Calgary stampede was 1912. The first year, all of those happen. Uh, but it really wasn't until the thirties when, when we really, uh, saw, saw like the modern sport of rodeo take place. Uh, and so it was in, let's see. Uh, it was the rodeo association of America. And started in 1929 this was a group of rodeo producers and they formed to standardize rules, uh, stem, establish a point system this, to determine world champions, uh, 
monitor judges and establish fair pack practices in awarding prize money. And, um, <coughs> of course, seeing how that this association was made up of like stock contractors and the, the event or the venues and the people that put on the rodeos themselves. Uh, this caused a big backlash from the contestants, which were for the most part working cowboys. And, uh, and the, the rodeo association of America, good point. Uh, before this, before they standardized everything, it was a lot like uh, boxing where, you know, you had uh, several different titles. And uh, so you could be a world champion in this, this promotion, but not in that one. Um, and so th th you, you could have four or five different world champions walking around and, and none of them ever compete at the same rodeo. So they decided to standardize it and, um, well, <coughs> seeing how that the people that organized it were the people putting it on, uh, they're going to try to make the most money that they, they can. And, uh, they, uh, it got to the point where they were, they weren't paying out much of anything and, and they were making a lot of money because rodeo, was and still is a very popular sport always has been when it comes to town people show up and uh, and these these producers were putting on or were making a lot of money and and the cowboys were barely much like today uh at least the ones that are that are on like your smaller circuits barely eking out a living so on october 30th my birthday by chance uh 1936 61 cowboys banded together and voted to strike against the Boston garden rodeo, which is a big, big rodeo. And it was all over the, the, the amount of prize money. And then three years later, uh, on November 6th, 1939, they formed the rodeo cowboys or the, the cowboys turtle association. And, uh, and this basically became a cowboy union. <clears throat> a rodeo cowboy union. We've talked about cowboy unions before and, and how hard they are to put together. But, uh, this was one of them and it actually kind of took, and they called themselves the Cowboys turtle association because like a turtle, they were slow to act. They were, you know, this was, uh, seven years after the, the rodeo association America formed, uh, seven years it took them to to call this strike or whatever and so they said they were slow to act but once uh once they did act they were not afraid to stick their necks out and uh and eventually they changed the name to the rodeo cowboys association which later morphed into the professional rodeo cowboys association the prca which we know today and uh initially in and in some of these early rodeo events uh the women just competed right alongside the men. There wasn't women's events. It was just, uh, there were the events. And if there were women there, uh, they, they can compete in an event just, just like the men did. And some of them won, some of them didn't. And, uh, and kind of a low point in, uh, in the professional rodeo association or, or the, the, the timeline of professional rodeo was, uh, I believe it was in Pendleton, uh, during the, the Bronx riding, uh, a woman got killed. I think a horse turned over in the chutes and, uh, broke her back or something. <clears throat> and, uh, from there on, um, they, they kind of started outlawing women, in in the uh in the rodeo and so then it took took a few years but it was uh like 1948 when the women's rodeo association was was formed yeah 1948 they called it the girls rodeo association later changed it to the women's professional rodeo association what we know today and uh eventually they got uh barrel racing uh sanctioned as a sport within uh professional rodeo 
And uh, I, I don't is I can't recall if uh, if Breakaway is at the is in the the NFR this year, but I know it was at Reno Rodeo. Uh, so there, I, I I don't. I guess I could look that up real quick. Um, but the the sport has morphed and changed a lot over the year, and then you know one, once once uh, PRCA really took off, uh, became popular. Well, then then the the ranch cowboys felt like they were kind of getting neglected, and uh, let's see breakaway roping. NFR. Oh. Looks like, um, yeah. It's a two day event, though. Let's see. So, Wrangler National Finals breakaway roping in conjunction with uh, WNFR. Uh, women ropers will compete for the 2021 World Championships. Uh, breakaway roping and a $200,000 purse at this two-day event. So it's just a two-day deal, but it's not part of the 10-round the NFR, I guess. Huh. All right, so it sounds... So, so they're doing a like the the NFR. So it's top fifteen people, but it's only a, it's a two day ten round. So it's it's still a ten round deal. But that, I wonder why that's not part of the main rodeo, huh? So they're going five rounds on the sixth and five rounds on the seventh. Weird. So that's that's probably going to be part of the main show here pretty soon, I would imagine. <clears throat> but anyway, um, the women in the sport of rodeo goes all the way back to uh, you know that's, as far as organized stuff. Um, you know, Annie Oakley was part of the Wild West show. Uh, there's been plenty of, of women, uh, bronc riders throughout the years. And now there's some, well, well, they're not, they're not heavily, uh, uh, you know, a big focus of the, the NFR itself out, you know, they just got the, the barrel race and there are some really, really handy women out there nowadays. And, uh, I guess there probably always were, but it seems like more often than not you you can you can find some some really ropey or really sticky women out there so i don't know it's uh i i've always found found rodeo kind of interesting or, or just intriguing like i i enjoy watching a good rodeo but like a lot of stuff that uh that revolves around um cowboying it it gets very very commercialized and um strays quite a ways from from the the origins and there there's nothing against rodeo guys but more often than not when when you find you you meet somebody who's uh like that that rodeos for their living um <clears throat> a lot of times they don't make the best uh the 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 best actual cowboys and uh and it's I don't know it, it's it's one of those weird uh, it, it's it's uh, they're they're kind of in a weird position because uh, the sport that they that they compete in also uh, is derived directly from day to day life and and a job at, you know as opposed to like baseball baseball came out of sheer boredom or football same thing it's not 
it wasn't guys doing their job competing against each other. It was guys bored with their jobs and they created something else to compete against themselves or com- compete against each other. Where <laughs> Cowboy started out with like this ranch saying like, ah, my, my, my Cowboys are better than your Cowboys or, and that probably started from the, that ranch's Cowboys saying like, Hey, you know, your buddy, like I, I bet I can throw a loop from here to there. And the other guy said, I, I can throw a loop from here to there too, but I can make it turn over. The other guy says, well, I can do that on this young horse and that, that horse is going to be bucking and I can still do that. That that's how it all evolved. And then as you see the PRCA take off in the, and the ranch cowboys feel like they get neglected. Well, then they start their own rodeo uh, promotion and then they, and not, not even their own rodeo promotion, but they start their, their own new, new going. That's air quotes for everybody on audio doing air quotes here, new form of rodeo where they go, go back to more, uh, day to day type, uh, situations where, you know, you, and, and they, they start the ranch rodeo, which really was like what the rodeo started out to be. But now we get, we got a trailer loading back in the 1700s. There were no pickups, no pickups, let alone trailers. So, you didn't really have a, a trailer loading competition. So it's, it's an evolution of, of the old ranch rodeo, but it's, it's not new, but we call that's what we called, but <clears throat> it's a very free market way of thinking. And it's like, well, instead of trying to uh, continue being a working cowboy and compete with uh, these guys that rodeo for a living, then you say, well, hell with them. Well, we'll start with, that that's not how it works out here on the ranch anyway. So we get the best, uh, ranch guys out there. Well, now the WRCA finals in Amarillo talking with boots here the other day. Uh, and once again, thanks to everybody that, that stopped him and, uh, and told him that you enjoyed hearing him on, on the podcast. That was, that was pretty cool. He's, he's told me about that a couple times now. Um, but talking with him, he said there was 10,000 people there at the, at the WRCA finals. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. You have the, the Western States ranch rodeo finals right around that same time up in Winnemucca. And I don't think they have 10,000 people that, that, that go there, but they got, that's a pretty big deal too. And it's, uh, and it's just pretty cool how, how all those things come together. And then, even outside the PRCA, you you had the you had the PBR which branched off of that because the the bull riders <clears throat> got butt hurt because they were they felt like they were bringing in all the all the spectators and and only getting a limited amount of the 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 purse, so they started their own so that the bull riders would get more more money. And now that's like a uh, that's got to be a billion dollar industry nowadays. And, uh, and you have one of the best in the world over there, JB Mooney, that's now coming back to PRCA because he, uh, he feels like PRCA is more towards the, the roots of, of, uh, of rodeo. And, uh, and then even in within all of that, you have like the CBR, you've got all the little state, uh, rodeo associations. You got college rodeo. You got Little Bridges rodeo, and and it's just it's it's funny how and well and even with within all that you have different sports. Uh, well, you have the bull riding, obviously PBR, CBR, but you got the like um, you got the world world series, uh, team rope and you got the U S uh, team rope and association. You got the ACTRA, uh, team rope and association. You got the feedlot Cowboys, uh, uh, team rope and you've got all these different associations and, uh, and it's all based on, uh, on, I, I more, more often than not, it's based off of your geography, but, all these different associations compete with each other. And a lot of, a lot of cowboys are members of, of different associations. And, 
it's very much a a market based uh, economy. I guess uh, how how it all all works. It's all based on on supply and demand, and no, oh, it's it's kind of cool. Rodeo is really really unique on um, and all that, and and one of those. It's one of the few sports where you can you can keep going. Like there, there's definitely the the young man's game and and all the rough stock work where uh, saddle bronc bareback and uh, and bull riding. You got a pretty uh, excuse me. You got a pretty limited window of when you can compete. Much like uh, most of your other professional sports. Uh, shit takes a toll on your body, but there's also events within that sport, say team roping where, uh, speed Williams and, uh, you know, speed and, uh, rich Skelton and, and speed Williams shit. They were what in their sixties still going to NFR every year. So, so there's, uh, there's different, different events within that sport where guys can last a long time. And then there's, yeah, there's like those Iron Man characters, like the uh, Billy Epbauer. Well, he was in his 40s, still riding saddle Bronx and doing it well, uh, winning the world. So <clears throat> there's there's a few of those, but uh, for the most part, those those rough stock events that's a, that's a young man sport, and and but there there's those guys that hang in there forever. But you get onto the rope side of things. Uh, and especially team rope and guys hang around forever and, and the same way on the on the barrels there's there's uh like sherry Servy and uh charmaine james who were my, my buddy uh clint has uh i remember back in high school he had the biggest crush on on charmaine james he, he thought she was the hottest woman alive and i thought she was okay uh, but I will say in his credit, she did hold up. Well, she looked the same age for about 30 years. I don't know what she looks like nowadays, but, uh, Oh, it, it's kind of a cool time of year just cause all those associations that all kind of, it all kind of filters into the, to the lead up, uh, the build up to the, the Wrangler national finals rodeo. And that's the top 15, every year go at it for 10, 10 days. And every one of those rounds has a big pot attached to it. And there's guys and gals every year that, that make it to the NFR, not in the top 10 in their standings and come back and either make a run for the world title or, or sometimes even and win one outright. And it's, uh, just to get to the NFR is uh, is a big, I mean, it's a big accomplishment. You gotta you gotta be really good at what you do because it's all based on how much money you won. And uh, you know, it's this this isn't a, a rodeo podcast, but there is at some time I wouldn't mind getting getting some somebody who's really made that NFR run. You know more, more than just once, but like ha- how you plan into that, because you gotta, you gotta hit the big money rodeos. And also, I, I don't know, there, there's, I'm sure there's a somewhat of a formula to it, but I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, fall works or cabin season or whatever, whatever busy time of year it is, you have a good plan going into it until, uh, it happens. And then you just, you just go. And I, it seems like uh, a lot of the the guys that really make a, a run at it rodeo, and it seems to be kind of the way there it is for them too. They got a, a you know, got a, a plan of how they're gonna how they're gonna do shit this year, and then once that run starts, you're just on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. You just go, and. Uh, I don't know, it, but it all it all culminates uh, in Vegas here Thursday, and it's a fun one to watch. I also like uh, hearing stories from. Uh, <coughs> well, 
It's uh, I, like I've said before. I don't I don't go to the rodeo so much anymore to to watch the rodeo. I go to 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 see people I haven't seen in a while or, or to to hear stories and whatnot. So that that's also one of the the best parts of NFR is just hearing stories from people who went out to Vegas and uh, found out they couldn't handle Vegas. And, uh, and that, those are always some really, really funny stories. So um, I'm going to try to get uh, some good people t- on to, to help uh, do this watch along thing. And we'll, uh, we'll provide our own commentary. We'll, uh, if uh, the action gets a little, a little dull, we'll, we'll have some stories to tell uh, in the meantime, but I think it's going to be fun. We'll uh, we'll see how it works on Thursday, and if it's uh, if it's worth doing, we'll try to do some more of them. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I uh, hope you guys are, and uh, we'll try to. I'm going to try to work in. I, I've never. I've done a little bit of, of gambling on like football and and stuff, and so I'm not sure how the the lines work on on rodeo. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little research. Um, yeah, we might add that into it as well. See how, cause I'm not sure exactly how they, how you bet on, on rodeo. So we'll, 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 we'll find out. I'll, I'll do some research and we'll find out. So anyways, uh, I think that starts at seven. Let's see. NFR 2021. I know it starts Thursday and I believe it starts at seven uh, Pacific time. So it'd be eight mountain, nine central. Uh, Just to double check that real quick. I'm pretty sure that's. uh, Uh, all right. So no, it starts at, uh, 545. All right. So it's, that starts early 545 Pacific. So that's, uh, 745 central. So it'll be off to, off to boogie to get, get shit done and, uh, and ready to go on Thursday, but we'll get it. Don't worry. And, uh, we'll be here watching it with you. So, until then, uh, we'll should do. Uh, I'm not sure what Aaron's uh, schedule is this week, but we'll have a fence post politics one way or the other. And uh, anyhow, I enjoy rodeo. I hope you guys do too, and hope you had a good uh, good Thanksgiving. And we'll we'll see you later this week. So thanks for tuning in and um, move your ass. We're burning daylight. big one, an old rodeo. They'd been trying to hire us for a few years or so. The grandstand was bursting, the infield was full. They'd run all the chucks and they'd bucked all the bulls. I felt stiff in the saddle, it's been a year since I'd rode. And I'd never been on him Save an afternoon low But this was the last thing On my tortured mind As I put heels to belly And the band played the time He was a big sorrow gelding With a golden streaked mane A silver mount of saddle And hand braided reins He had one blue eye That was clear I rode in on Felt none of my pain Well we made quite an entrance In show business style And ten thousand people All witnessed my smile But you were not there Among them I'm sorry to say As I rode through the crowd Toward the big outdoor stage If my pony was skittish 
with all the people around And if he spooked just a little when the spotlight shone down It's nothing compared to the heartbreak and pain That come with a love that has withered in vain Like I always do I sang every one of the love songs for you And then I climbed right back on him And I spurred him away And as the cheers and the dust from the arena did fade I didn't feel like no cowboy anymore Anyway He was a big sorrow gelding with a golden streak my pain.